This video does not replace the operating instructions under any circumstances. Before using the machine, the operating instructions must be read in full and the stipulated safety regulations observed. The manufacturer assumes no liability for damage caused by non-observance of the operating instructions. Hi there, my name's Lisa and I'm part of the internal sales team at GoVile. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the LT Master and Vario Master. To help clarify things, we'll use this model to show you the various modules. Hydraulic pivoting drawbar, bail delivery ramp, twin wrapping arm with film pre-stretcher, bail chamber, binding, control panel, elevator and refeed belt, feeder. The accessories package contains a handheld transmitter for the bail deposit, a holder for the handheld transmitter, a filling gun for grease lubrication, a cable harness for the power supply with an isobus socket, a spiral cable for the lighting system, a key for the control cabinet, an ABS spiral cable, the operating instructions. Ensure the machine is horizontal before attaching the baler wrapper combination to the tractor. Move the switching valve to the central position in order to adjust the two front support feet. Check that the attachment height is correctly set. Refer to the operating instructions for more information. Now use the hand pump and lever to move the support feet into the transport position. The baler wrapper combination is fitted with either a hydraulic or a compressed air brake system. When using a dual-line air brake system, the brake line, yellow, must always be connected first, followed by the supply line, red. If your machine is fitted with a hydraulic dual-line brake system, connect the brake line to the tractor first, followed by the extra line, and finally the ABS plug. Before driving off, check that the parking brake has been released. This is located on the right-hand side of the machine, underneath the black toolbox. Check the vertical play on the PTO shaft stub before connecting the joint shaft to the tractor. Excessive play will cause severe vibrations on the machine. Then secure the PTO shaft guard with the chain. Note, adjust the length of the PTO shaft when attaching to the tractor for the first time. The sole purpose of the ISOBUS plug and socket connector is to supply power to the machine. Connect the plug to the socket on the tractor. If your tractor does not have an ISOBUS socket, use the enclosed cable harness. The 13-pin lighting plug has to be plugged in when driving on the road. Check that the lighting is working properly before traveling on a public road. The machine is now attached. Next, I'm going to show you how to maneuver it into its work position. Ensure that the machine is set up on a dry, firm, and level surface. Two hydraulic control devices are needed in order to position the baler wrapper combination. For the safety bolt of the pivoting drawbar, the hydraulic hose with the green dust cover cap is connected to a control device. The machine is positioned to the left or right using the hoses with the black dust cover caps. A double acting control device is required.
A choice of two gear steps is provided to adapt the LT Master to the drive power of the tractor. 1,000 RPM should be used if your tractor is rated at less than 92 kilowatts or 125 horsepower. If your tractor is rated at more than 125 horsepower, the machine can be operated using 830 RPM. This gear step is also selected when using the electric drive. Leave enough space to remove the bales and to accommodate all the material you will need. The drawbar safety bolt must be unlocked before the machine is positioned. Note if the safety bolt does not retract, moving the drawbar a little may help. The machine is moved fully to the relevant delivery site using the double acting control device. Important, do not try to position the machine while it's stationary. This is best done while moving at a walking pace. To protect the PTO shaft and the machine, it's important that the drawbar and tractor form a straight line. Next, switch on the PTO shaft at the appropriate speed. For the LT Master, this will be either 830 or 1000 RPM, depending on the gear step. The Vario Master operates at a speed between 600 and 1000 RPM. Note that the hydraulic system of the machine is active as soon as the PTO shaft starts turning. Next, open the side cover on the left-hand side of the machine. Remove the safety cotter pin first. Pull the lock lever and ensure that the cover engages in the safety latch. Repeat the procedure on the right-hand side of the machine. The additional control block on the control panel is used when configuring the machine. These functions are operated in combination with the air fan lever on the main control block. Check that the switching valve is in the central position, and then start by lowering the two rear support feet, followed by the two front support feet. If working on a less firm surface, use wooden beams or hardwood blocks to prevent any twisting of the machine. The machine should be totally level both lengthwise and crosswise. To lower the bale deposit ramp, undo the relevant lock. Note the bale deposit ramp with the bale tipper is locked on both sides. The handset for the baler wrapper combination is required in order to move the feeder into its work position. Connect it to the purple colored control cable. Switch the handset on by pressing the green key. If your machine is already equipped with a Profi Plus terminal, switch it on using the on-off switch. Then press Start. Important! If the Emergency Stop message appears on the display, all the emergency stop switches must first be deactivated. Then press the OK button. When driving on the road, the feeder is secured using two steel cables. The feeder must be moved up before they can be released. This is done by pressing the Unlock Feeder and Feeder Up buttons at the same time. To prevent the feeder from rolling backwards, it is essential to release the buttons in the correct sequence. First, release the Feeder Up button, and then the Unlock Feeder button. Now, detach the steel cables, starting on the right-hand side of the machine, followed by the one on the left-hand side. Important! After removing the steel cables, do not allow anyone to remain in the area behind the feeder. Press the Unlock Feeder and Feeder Down buttons to lower the feeder completely. Ensure that the support roller rests on the ground across its entire width.
Now open the feeder's side panels. To complete the setup, fold up the side plates of the elevator. Every function shown on the left-hand supplemental control block can also be performed using the hand pump. To close the machine again, carry out the above instructions in the reverse order. I'm now going to show you how to load your machine with wrapping film. Push the film holder up and lock it in its uppermost position. Next, fold down the film storage so you can remove a roll of wrapping film. Note the rotation direction when loading the wrapping film. Lift the wrapping film into the film stretching unit and unlock the film holder. Note, take care not to damage the edges of the wrapping film. Now feed the wrapping film as shown on the pictogram. Use the button or hand lever to rotate the wrapping arm to bring the second film stretching unit to your side. Load this with another roll of wrapping film. Check that there is no one in the danger zone around the wrapping arm. Open the film cutter using the lever. Now insert the wrapping film and close the cutter lever. Your Baylor wrapper combination includes a dual binding unit that can also be used as a single binding unit. The binding system works with both net and wide film. First, I'm going to show you how to load a single roll of net. To make loading the net easier, open the bundle unit and open the cutting knife. Fold down the steps to access the binding unit. First of all, unlock the binding unit and align the stops so the roll of net is positioned centrally. Before loading the roll of net into the open holder, check its rotation direction. First, feed the net underneath the black brake roller and behind the net or film uptake to the bundle unit. Now pull the net over the widening roller and over the upper black roller into the binding space. The net should extend about 10 centimeters, or rather 4 inches, into this space. Important! Don't forget to lock the binding. Rotate the roller backwards to tension the net. And close the holder. If the dual binding unit is used with nets, both nets are placed into the same binding space. The process of loading a roll of net is therefore exactly the same as seen in the previous steps. Wide film is loaded into the binding in exactly the same way as the net. In the next two steps, I'll show you how to load the wide film in single and double configurations. You might find it helpful to form a pigtail. 
The loading process is also made easier if you cut the start of the pigtail using the blade on the bundle unit. You've now successfully set up your baler wrapper combination and can now start work. Enjoy using your machine and thanks for watching. See you again soon.